Good morning YouTube. Today we're working on a Kawasaki 100 engine. Um, this is the 10 speed engine. It's the um, basically like a Kawasaki KE100 but it's a 10 speed. It's got a gear reduction to it. This is the shaft that drives everything. Comes right through the case. What you have here is a standard 5 speed. One down, five up, uh, four up. Okay, so it's got the same shift pattern um, as the other ones. However, it has gear reduction on it. There's a little lever on the handlebar, and you move, you slide that over, and it locks it into uh, into gear and holds it. And then there's a re. I'll show you what that looks like at the end of the video. Okay, so um, I had a request um, for this because a lot of people don't understand how to put this together, what's involved, what it looks like, and what it is, and how to do it. So I think I just covered everything right there. So this right here is my uh, parts. This is a junk engine um, I'm using for a um, demonstration to show you how this all goes together um, because there's no information on these. The book shows you what it looks like in a schematic, but there's nobody to tell you exactly the uh, technical information on it. So here I am. First things first, make sure your shaft is clean. You should always make sure your shaft is clean. The seal is clean up inside here and then uh, make sure there's no debris or debris around there. Make sure it's nice and clean inside and outside. Okay. Don't really matter about all that because that's where the chain goes. I mean, you're going to clean that up. You should. But for what I'm doing right now, I'm not going to. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with this gear right here. This is the 15 tooth sprocket. Sorry about the sunlight. It's very bright out here. Um, 15 tooth, uh, you know, sprocket. And inside there's a brass bushing with a bunch of little dots on it. Those dots are to carry the oil. What you're going to want to make sure is this surface right here is clean. Okay, that's where the seal rides. Just picked up a whole bunch of tools on the side. I already got to clean. Um, it's a whole bunch of free stuff on my yard sale. All kinds of little sockets and wrenches and stuff. So... I'm moving out of the way because the sunlight, it keeps blinding me right in the eye. Okay. So, back on this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some grease. I use Mobile One grease to have it. You can use whatever you want for grease. It can be multi-purpose. could be whatever. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab my big gear right here. I'm just going to do a little bead of grease after I clean up the, the seal. How do you clean up the seal? I use brake clean. Seems to work the best on them. And then I'm just going to uh, clean up the surface. I'm just going to put a layer of grease around the outer part where it rides on the seal. And I'm going to put a dab on the inside of this thing as well. Just because it doesn't have a, uh, what do you call it there? So it doesn't. What you're looking for in there, you want to see the dots. If you don't see the dots or you see like a wear, wear pattern, that bushing is wearing out. And you may have further problems. So, how it looks is it's got these two cogs on the end. Right there, those two big pieces stick up. And then the smooth part. The smooth part, I'll show you right here. Okay, see how it's got the, see if I can get it with the cogs. See right here, these are the cogs. These are going to go into the gearbox. These are going to face outwards. So this is going to fit right on here like this. Hopefully it goes back onto the shaft. Here we go. Got to make sure it's right straight on. And then I just rotate it a little bit like that. Get that gear, uh, grease moving and it's into the seal and it feels good. There's no binding on the shaft. You don't want no binding right now. It's in neutral. Okay. After you get that on, this is another seal ring right here. So you're going to stick more grease on the outer part of that as well. Now you guys are probably used to having a bolt um, and a little uh, ring clip on there. This is for the 10 speed, okay? So, we're gonna grab our cover. This, this side cover right here has the, um, the big giant hole in it. It's gonna go through there. And you might notice on these Kawasaki's that they have these extra side cover bolts that you've always been wondering, what the hell are those things for? Well, those are for this cover. Okay, make sure your shifter goes through. 
Okay. And I put grease on the seal, on the back side of the seal as well. But I've already done that. I forgot to put that in there, but I always do that. And then just gently tap it into place. Okay. Once it's in place, I grab any extra grease. I lube the whole shaft right here, just like that. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Just like that. Now, this is a tricky part. You see all those holes that are on the shaft? I'm going to pause you for a second. I got grease all over my hand. I'm going to wipe my hand up just to get greasy again, but hold on. Okay. So, now you notice that there's four big giant holes on here and there's not much room to work with. So, I got the transmission in neutral. And what we're going to do is we're going to take grease and we're going to just take a big glob of it right in your fingers and pack the hole. Pack the hole. Don't be afraid of the grease. Pack the hole. And then that's when these bearings right here are going to fit into. Okay? The grease is going to hold the bearing. Should be two per side. And there are four sides. The grease actually sticky enough to hold the bearings in place. I'm going to put all four bearings in place. It's pretty slick. <laughs> Get it? Grease? Pretty slick. Um, how the grease works and holds all the, uh, the bearings in place. But I wonder if people are like, how the hell do you hold all those bearings, especially the bottom ones, in place? Well, the grease actually holds all your bearings in the place. And it's pretty slick. And this way none of the bearings fall out. I have the, the motor tilted too at an angle. So you see, I'm just globbing it on my finger and I'm packing the hole like you would a wheel bearing. Okay. Also to be careful, some of those holes can be sharp. Just to give you a little FYI on that. Put the bearings in. Like that. Okay. So now I have all eight bearings installed. There's plenty of grease on the shaft, so I don't have to re-lubricate it. And I'm going to grab this gear right here that has the receiving cogs on it that are going to fit. They're going to go into that big gear. Once again, you're going to want to look at the, the bushing, and you can see the four grooves where the inner bearings are going to fit into. So we're going to take this right here and stick this on. It's already lubricated, and it keys right into the thing. Then, we're going to take our other shaft. Right here, it's got two holes in it for oiling. Okay, the oil's going to fit through there, and I'm going to lube this up. So I'm going to put you down for a second, lube that, and then I'll get back to the video. Okay. I'm back. So, you see the hole right here on the top? And there's another hole on that side, and as this rotates, this does rotate. This is where you're going to fill this crankcase, this, not crankcase, but this um, gearbox with motor oil. And I'm going to tell you all about that in a minute. But there's a hole, I don't know if you can see it or not, in the video. I'm going to step back so I can show you what this, um, right here. Up on the top of the bearing um, boss, there's a hole, and oil is going to travel down through that shaft. And it's basically slung up there from the gears spinning. Now, this is a very important note to note. Um, this next gear that goes on has a flat surface and then it has a raised surface. The raised surface goes out and the flat surface goes in. And if you do this backwards, you are actually going to burn it up. And I'll tell you why you're going to burn it up. It's because the whole, if you put the flat side against the bearing over here, it's going to grab the upper part of the bearing too, and it's just going to grind itself to shit. So the flange actually goes outwards. Okay. The next step is to take this gear right here. It's one gear, but it's got two sprockets on it. Check your bushing. Make sure it's not worn. You've already greased the shaft, so this right here fits right on top like this. Just key it in like that. Okay. And that is how you assemble the gearbox. 
this gasket is junk, but you're going to want to replace the gasket or, or use silicone or cut a new gasket um, because you're going to want to definitely make sure that that is sealed up because you're going to have motor oil in here. All right, so the next step is this shaft right here. You select a shaft, okay? And basically what this is going to do, it's going to rotate. You're going to have to rotate it a little bit to find out which way it goes in. Because um, this right here actually moves. This piece right here rides the bearings and actually pushes the bearings out that are on that shaft and moves the bearings out to grab the different gears. And that's how you change your ratios. See right here? Change, and changing gear ratios right now. By moving that in and out, it allows the bearings to drop back into the shaft and then this gear, like watch, I'll show you. This gear right here will move freely. What was it, all the way in? Am I all the way in? Yeah, see how I can move it and the shaft stays still? That's because I'm not into that gear, but when I move it out, this gear moves to the outside and turns the shaft on that ratio. It has, like I said, it's the same five speed, but it's got two different ratios. Like a ratio potato head, okay? The next part's kind of tricky. So you got this all in, you got, you're got you gonna put a little dab of grease on the outside there. I only put a dab of grease just because you don't wanna, it's gonna be in oil anyway, but it helps on, on assembly. Then you have your shifter box. Kinda, sorta, whatever you wanna call this thing. All right, and inside there's a little arm. So I'm gonna teach you guys a little something. When you go to put this on, it ain't gonna just fit right on there. And then you're not gonna be able to shift, okay? What I do is I pull the shifter out a little bit, line it up with the, oh, let me see if I can get, I'm going to put you down, reposition this thing, and then, uh, actually, can I do it with one hand? Here we go. Okay. This little um, gear inside here is what lines up. So when you go to put this on, that little piece in the center there, that little, it looks like a triangle, not a triangle, rect, uh, rectangle fits into that groove. So you're going to carefully bring it in until you can move the shaft in and out. Then you can just rotate it and set it into place. Like that, so it shifts. Okay. And then, before you do that though, before you make sure that, you want to make sure that this piece right here is on the inside. See how I have it on the outside? That's incorrect. There we go, like that. And that's gonna hook up to your cable. That's your shifter. After you have it all assembled, you can put you then put your screws in. Okay, that's a small screw. That's the big screw. It's gonna have uh, a series of different size screws. It should go all the way through the case. Oh no, this takes the small, these are the big ones for this, yeah. Oh, there's gonna be a bunch of little screws this size, sorry. This size right here that are gonna go through the case and, and, and screw it to the case. And then all my other screws are the big screws. Yeah. There's a lot of screws to hold this side cover onto this thing. I forgot I already robbed a few screws out of this thing. So you're gonna screw all your, all your cover screws together at that point. Put it together. Okay. So then your next step, after you get that all done, you got your gear in there, it's all assembled, it's all screwed down. The next thing you're gonna do is put motor oil in here. You're gonna use the same oil you use in here as you do in your crankcase, which I um, don't know what the, I, you'd have to look it up, I think it's 1030. Um, that's what I use, 1030, regular motor oil. Um, just undo your plug here, and then see this screw right here? Yep, that one right there. You're gonna take that screw out before you fill that up, and it should you should see it drip out here. When you start to drip, you are full. Stop, put your plugs back in, and you are all set to go. And that, my friends, is how you install the 10-speed gearbox on the Kawasaki 100 10-speed. Like I said, the gearbox internally is the same, but the outside is a, um, a gear reduction. It just changes at high and low speeds. And then of course, don't forget your trusty little cover. Um, this just fits right on here with a single screw. Like, 
this. This keeps the crap out. Let me see if I can put a little screw on that. I didn't put all the way in. So anyway, that's what it looks like right there. Um, and then this cable right here runs up to the uh, handlebars for your shifter. So I'm going to pause you. I'm going to go see if I can locate my shifter real quick and bring that out and show you what it looks like and how it works. Okay, so I got the shifter. And this is what it looks like right here. It's got a push button on the end. And basically, um, when you're in high, you want to switch to low. Let's see, right here. You're on low right right there. You want to go to high or change or vice versa. I forgot how it goes, but it goes like that. And you can't push it back until you hit the detent. The, the detent right in the button. You push that button in, and then it will release it. And that's pretty much it. That goes on the other end of the cable. See if you can get a good look at that. And it's got the push button on the end. So when you change into the high or the low, I think it's the low. Yeah, it stays in high. You're in high all the time, but when you shift to low. It locks it and then you can't shift out of it until you release it by pushing the button in just holds it it holds it in place and that's it that is your um what you call it there your high low switch real nice real simple real basic system and it just pulls on the cable and, and shifts it and moves that little lever in and when it moves that little lever in that's inside this case It moves that center shift. It moves the center shift right here and changes it with the ball bearings by moving the ball bearings to the inner and outer part. And it doesn't move very far, it just moves in a little bit. And then it changes the gear ratio. Real simple system. And then turns the output shift, this main shaft that drives this sprocket in here via chain, it gives it the high and low range. Real basic system. But it's really, really cool. And that is how it works. In and out. Right there. Plunger shift. So, I'm in, like I moved it, so I'm, in, I'm locked in gear right there. So anyway, I hope this helps. Don't forget that flange. Watch the video as much as you need to to get, you know, the proper um, installation of the parts and pieces. Because if you don't do this main gear right here, you will burn it up. You'll burn up the bearing and this gear. And these things are very hard to find. So, I hopefully that helps you out with your um, reinstallation. A lot of people take these apart, put them in a baggie, and go, how the hell did I put that? Like, how does this go together? And it's confusing because especially when you take the side cover off. If you take the side cover off, you have to take this apart. You can't just slide it off the shaft. It doesn't work like that. Um, so you have to take it all apart to get the bearings and the piece, parts and pieces out. It's just a pain in the, the neck. You know, and of course, when you pull it apart, you're going to have oil coming out. And it's just crazy. And obviously, there's no drain plug. So when you take it apart, you got to put a bucket under the bike, break it free, and you're going to replace the gasket. And there's just a whole bunch. And it actually just knows it tells you right here. Right here, it tells you it takes 100 cc's of oil. So, you can measure it out too, if you want to measure it out. This takes 100 cc's of, uh, of motor oil, 10W30. So, that's it. That's all there is to it. Clean and check your seals. Clean up your whole gearbox. Make sure that when you take it apart... That everything is nice and clean. You use a clean surface. I threw this kind of threw this together to show you. Um, like I said, this is a junk engine. I rubbed tons of parts off of it. The magneto and this is the one. This is the engine right here. This is the G4. The G4 that I robbed the cylinder head. This is my KE100 cylinder head. But this is the one I robbed the cylinder head off of to, for the high compression, which is the 10 speed. So, which is pretty cool. It's got the high compression head. I mean, obviously, it's, it's you know, 93 octane. It's, it's got the, uh, it's because it's got, you know, all this extra stuff on it, too. So, anyway, 
I hopefully this video helps you guys with the reinstallation of your 10 speed gearbox uh, gear reduction. This is the gear reduction side, not the gearbox, but the gear reduction side. Um, hopefully this helps you out. And um, as always, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. And uh, like and share my videos. Appreciate it. Thank you.